Hello, Internet. Welcome back to Fast Travel Lounge. You're listening to episode 118. My name is Patrick. I'm joined by Seth. Say hi. Yeah, hello. And Steve. Say hi. Howdy, how? What, what, was, what was that? You, you feeling okay? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I was trying to think of something funny, and then I couldn't think of something funny, so I just made a funny noise. Oh, well, you know what I'm like. Can we move on, please? <laughs> no. Reminisce on mm, it a little longer. Right. <laughs> don't want to. No, because then, then we're going to have to as well, and we, we, we can't stand for that. Actually, I want to reminisce on it. Uh, I'm I'm just going to come out and say it. It is a bad day to be an IP involving guns this week. Would you like to elaborate? No. <laughs> um, we, we, we have the one-two punch of Borderlands being what some would call the the uh, Concord of movies, and we have Concord, <laughs> what some would call the Borderlands of video games. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's grim. My housemate was telling me how he's, um, one of his co-workers wants to create, like, fake, fake accounts on Facebook and, like, review bomb them. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. The guy, bomb? the guy hasn't even seen the, the guy hasn't seen the movie, so it's fucking insane. <laughs> the movie will be digitally available in, like, two days. <laughs> I guess I don't need to add that uh, to the new socket now. No, no, no. It's just, it's just, like, a funny topical thing because I've, I've been, I've been repeatedly talking up that I'm going to go see it, but it's actually a turn off knowing it's coming to digital platforms that quickly to stop me going and see it. Cause like, I'd do it. I would happily go pay full price to watch Borderlands movie, even though. So, so here's the you thing, fall. right? Like, everyone, everyone has said, "Don't do this." But it, for me, it's like it's like um, a, a wet paint sign. You can keep telling me that it's wet paint, but I I need to know, you know. So, what are you charging to wet paint with? <laughs> a copy of Borderlands movie. Um, yeah, it's 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 difficult though because I can't. I I could never, in good conscience, justify it in the best of times, but. It's even harder to justify it now, knowing that it's coming to digital platforms so soon. <laughs> so, absolute L. Their, their um, uh, overall theatrical takings are going to be, like, I don't know how much, like, a movie ticket costs anymore. I assume it's, like, $7,000, like everything else does at the moment. But uh, they're going to be missing out on all of that sweet, sweet money that I would have contributed. And uh, that's, that, that's an L for them. I can't wait to pirate it. Can you just um, tip them? Oh, like, give them a tip? Uh, okay. Yeah, tip them. Um, Make a good movie. Be, yeah, yeah, be better. <laughs> Here's uh, a tip. Get a better job. Hey, <laughs> don't, don't hire what? notorious funny man Kevin Hart to be a notoriously unfunny man Roland. I don't think I get that reference, but all the best. Hope this helps. <laughs> uh, well, I think we've padded enough of an intro unless, anything else, unless there's any other wild things people want to bring up. Um, I can make up some no, funny things. Yeah, 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 to think about it. No, no, we're moving on, we're moving on. Uh, Steam charts. Hopefully, we didn't give it away with Concord. I don't know if it is Concord. It's prepared by. It's Concord adjacent. Um, oh boy. <laughs> you mean Concord adjacent? See, the Concord is not Concord. <laughs> well, Concord is in there, but you got to do more than just Concord. You uh, know, you so know me. I hate these fucking double ones, uh, man. You mean record? Uh. So I got four games here. I just want you oh, to rank them from. Uh, I just want you guys to rank them from what has the highest player count at its all-time peak to what has the lowest one. All right. Now uh, they, 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 they're all they're all going to be fun ones because we love punching down on all of these games. So today's contestants are Exo Primal. Oh boy. Skull and Bones recent release on Steam that is sixty percent <laughs> off at launch. Oh <laughs> good. Babylon's Fall and Concord. Yeah. Uh huh. Steven, uh -huh. would you do the honors of ranking them from first to last? Um, Exo Primal first. I'd probably say Skull and Bones second, and then Concord, and then Babylon's Fall. Ooh. Okay, Patrick. I'm I'm, I'm going to schmix it up. I I think it's I I I, like ooh. It. I I think it's Skull and Bones first, then Babylon's Fall, then Exo Primal, then actually no no I'm going to invert that Skull and Bones. Exo Primal, Babylon's Fall, Concord. Final answer, lock it in. I'll take the dub. Steve, shake my hand. I'm, I'm, I'm closing my eyes, but we're shaking hands. Like <laughs> I've leaned in for a kiss, but I've gone too far. I've made so, a lead. so the way I'm distribu <laughs> distributing points on this one is that for everyone that you get in the correct place, you get, you get a point. Unfortunately... <laughs> Neither of us got points. Actually, no, wait. Uh, no, yeah, no. Both of you got two points each. Oh. So Yes, finally. I lean in for a kiss again. So the correct <laughs> answer is Exo Primal first place with, uh, let, let, let me get the numbers, 4,995 max players nine months ago. That was first. Oh, Jesus. Skull and Bones, 
was 2,615 as of three days ago. I got this one as well, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. So those one. were your two yeah. points. You, you got the, second, the last two wrong. Bab- Babylon's <laughs> Fall was 1,188 players as of 2.4 years ago. And Concord maxed out at 697 five days ago. Oh, well, you get that on the big jobs. They spent eight years um, on that game. Yeah. Well, yeah, look, I've spent, like, what, 29 years of my life? We're not all successes. <laughs> you how can many, say that many, one how, again. How, how, how many concurrent players are playing Steve right now, Steve? Um, how many people are you getting played by right now? Uh, this one, the man upstairs. Eight, yeah. <laughs> Seven billion? Eight billion? Enough. Enough? Fair enough. Uh, well, thank you hold for on, that. Hold on, hold uh, on, hold uh, on. Oh, okay. But he's still going. An encore? An on concord, perhaps? An encore, if you would? As of um, right now, when I am Googling <laughs> this, uh, Stephen is ranked 36th most popular given name in the United States, with an estimated population of 1,166,265 Stevens in the US. Well, I go by Steve, but I'm not wearing my glasses. When I put my glasses on, I'm Steven, but I don't have my glasses. I feel like there needs to be a, uh, like, uh, I was sort of hoping you had the follow-up, but now I just have to kind of pad the silence while I assume you have to continually scroll down to find that there's, like, ten other people all called Patrick, who, by the way, I know them all. Every person that's ever been called Patrick, they're all part of my hive mind. Well, I didn't have the Patrick stats, but if you wanted me to spend another three minutes Googling, then sure. Why would you bring up the Steven stats? <laughs> because you mentioned it. You yeah. mentioned how many people are playing Steven right now. I gotta be honest with you, fellas. This is a bad bit. Can we move on? <laughs> no, we're staying on it. Would you like to elaborate a little more? No. Does that mean you share a brain cell with The, the character Bateman? creator design is flawed. Uh, we tried picking a class for Steve. Uh, kindergarten was considered too difficult. Uh, we're moving <laughs> on. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy. Hey. Anybody could you crispy cream stories? Straight to, uh, <laughs> sadly, sadly not. No, no crispy cream. <laughs> I had some of Daniel's donuts when I was in Melbourne airport, like, disgusting. Ago. They're actually pretty good. They're actually pretty good. Um, the well, Daniel's like donuts uh, sponsor us, like crispy cream. Maybe. I don't think Let's so. Let's them. Hey, Daniel, get in contact. Mr. Donut. <laughs> Mr. Donut himself. No, no, it's called oh. Daniel's Donuts. They're donuts that are owned by him. It's, an, it's not called Daniel Donut, which would imply that Donut is his last oh name. Oh, my God. Move. You can fucking mute this guy. <laughs> get him out of here. I have to spelling error you in real life as well <laughs> no, as in off. Messenger. <laughs> I, I think, we're, I think we're witnessing workplace harassment. You, you've listened this to all this podcast. <laughs> Not for you, it isn't. <laughs> you're right. When, 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 when you're doing what you love, it's, it's you, you're never working a day in your life. And I fucking hate uh, this. <laughs> 118 episodes, fellas. How are yeah. you doing? And you know what? Should have stopped at one. Uh, right, round the lounge for this week. Uh, I'll go first. What have I been up to? Absolutely nothing. Yay! <laughs> uh, played played a little bit of Monster Hunter now. The the next uh, next season's rolling around. That's that's my only update. Actually, you know what? You know what? Tiny, tiny Monster Hunter Now update. I know that I said I was, I was humming and hiring about whether the Kashala armor was like a good or a bad design in Monster Hunter Now. It's bad. Because they did the same thing with Teostra. They, they make the armor the thing that makes it easier to kill the monster with, as well as the thing that boosts the monster's weapons. So, no psychopath is going to take the weapons from an Elder Dragon and use them to beat that Elder Dragon to death. That's just, you're, you're, you're wasting time. So it's bad armor design. So... Shout out to me from whenever that was, like, six or seven episodes. Bumbling around like a fucking idiot. Not sure whether it was a good, uh, good design or a bad design. Just had to think on it for a bit. Anyway, Ron's over. <laughs> Steve, what have you been up to? Other than eating Daniel's donuts. Um, yeah, I went skiing. I'm not very good at skiing. Um, oh, shit, did you actually? Up, but... Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I was in the snow for a bit. Uh, I'm wow. not very good at skiing, but... Oh, well, I'm not very good at snowboarding. I haven't even tried snowboarding, but I think snowboarding looks cooler. So maybe next time we'll do snowboarding. It's harder um, than but skiing. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm sure it is, but look cool though. So oh, it does look cool. Link, mate. I, I say that because yeah. I unironically went snowboarding last weekend. Oh, right on, cool. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, in terms of, much. yeah, uh, you could play snowboard kids. Um, the, there is a video game called Snowboard Kids. I just want to. also a game called everybody. SSX, and it is fantastic. Ah, uh, yeah, let's go. 
Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, video games I'm playing, I've um, uh, played Dungeons of Hinterburg. That game came out about a month ago. I really en- uh, I enjoyed it. Let's leave it at that. Uh, and I'll also spend about three minutes talking about Cocoon. Um, that's a nice Ooh. little palate cleanser I was playing. All right, all right. And Seth? Uh, I've played Kunitsugami. I've, I've also finished uh, the Final Fantasy XIV expansion, but that's, that's a big topic. Let's uh, not talk about that. So I'll leave that for another time. Uh, but yeah, Kunitsugami came out. No one realized that it came out. So I got to do my due diligence and let everyone know about it. Do you have to? I see. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to. It's a pretty decent game. I played the anyway. When you, I played the demo. It's okay. All right. Well, uh, why don't we touch on Dungeons of Hinterburg? What what, what is that? Um, it's a video game. Tell tell me about the dungeons. Um, they're in Hinterburg. Um, <laughs> great, great topic. Uh, moving on, uh, Patrick. Do you have another Monster <laughs> Hunter now rent you want to hit us with? Uh, I do actually. I got like so many just stacked up, just in the quiver, ready to go. But you know what? I'm gonna keep Steve alive just a little bit longer and get him to continue talking about Thanks, Dungeons man. of Hinterburg. Thanks, man. Otherwise, really I I suspect we're gonna be dropping down to two people before the end before the end of this episode. A toaster and a bathtub <laughs> oh, um, may be involved. Uh, exactly. I'm. All I'm saying is there might be some sewers and some slides. Uh, Dungeons of Hinterburg. Um, so this is a game that came out about a month or two ago. Yeah, maybe six weeks. Um, it is an indie game made by an Austrian developer. Um, it's a pretty small team. And it came out on Game Pass. And I've kind of, like, after it was announced last year, I kind of vibed with the concept. And the concept was it's kind of like the real world and then this kind of weird city gets, like, magic powers. So people have, like, vacations in this area and they get magic powers and they can kind of complete these dungeons. And I was like, oh, that sounds fucking sick. Um, so then I played it. Through the magic of Game Pass, very cool. And it is, it's a very different game to what I was expecting. And I'm, it's for good things and bad things. So, like, the basic premise is you're this girl that is going to this town called Hinterberg um, that's recently awakened to magic powers. And there's like 25 different dungeons. And the basic premise is that you're on your, you're burnt out from your corporate life. So, you're like, fuck it, let's try like dungeon, uh, dungeon exploring and magic and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of because the magic has kind of sprung up essentially overnight and this in this town and this town has become like a tourist attraction. It's pretty interesting kind of concept, uh, but I find it like sticks. It doesn't stick the landing as well as what it should be. Like there is kind of an interesting dy- dynamic of how the town is like just usually a, a ski resort town, but now it's like, oh, hey, we've got people. Oh, that's from all why over you the went world. skiing. Yeah, it's actually, that's the real reason why. Yeah, I was hoping there was magic powers. Yeah, um, but it, it's it, it's one part. It, it kind of follows the and bear with me, Seth, before you you start crying. It follows the Persona formula, whereas during oh, the day, why would you're I cry explo- about that? Persona's great. Yep, but if you let me finish, like, it, no, I no, don't know, I just wanted to make. Okay, right on. All right, Will Smith. Uh, was it? No, it was Kanye. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Get my actors. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um. So in the day, you're kind of exploring dun- dungeons or exploring like the kind of, for lack of a better word, overworld of where all the different dungeons are and how to get to new dungeons and so on. Um, and in the nighttime, you've got, got like, uh, like social elements, like your friends you can make along the way. And depending on who you speak to and how you speak to them, if you raise your social stat with them, they'll give you bonuses, whether it's like extra money or a different ability or action points or different weapons or something and so on and so forth um and on the surface of it that sounds like a winning formula i've said numerous times on this podcast very very big persona fan and i kind of like how it it's a break like you had the gameplay and then you've got like the social talking type of element um but the friends you're making in this game dog shit no very no good they are stereotypes of hobbies like there's this guy that's a streamer there's this guy that's a like, stereotypical hipster there's this artist there's a musician there's a blacksmith like and they're very apart well actually the blacksmith's a bad example because she's uh, fighting the big corporation and that's an interesting one but all the others are just i don't fucking care like it's, it's a bit of a drag i don't care about your problems the writing kind of also falls down a bit as well um like there's just no investment and it's just very predictable um and I kind of, because there are some that are very well written, uh, like the, 
the teen kids in the town that live in the town but don't have to deal with all the tourism. They've deal, they've written very well. But then you get like grumpy old lady that's just oh, back in my day, um, I'd used to throw money around at people and everybody would worship me. And it's just kind of like, oh, there's no depth. And I kind of found that a bit lacking. A bit. But in terms of the actual like dungeon exploration, it very much feels like it's a Legend of Zelda type of dungeon exploring. Like each kind of, you know, you're split up into like four different areas. And each different area has like uh, magic abilities you get and then use those magic abilities in the dungeon. Uh, but you can only use the magic abilities uh, for that area in the dungeon. Like, for example, in the ice area, you get a snowboard, but you can't use the snowboard in any of the other areas. Um, so it's a good co- type of concept, like having magic properties and abilities unique to areas, but there are... Some of the abilities would work better in certain like situations in other areas, but you don't have access to it. But that's fine. It is what it is. Um, but, and also some of the dungeons as well, like some of them are like combat focused because there is a bit of combat to this game and it's essentially um, press the X button three times and then dodge and then press the X button three more times. So it is very simple and it kind of towards the end of the game gets very boring and some of the later dungeons will be difficult, but it will only be difficult because the en- enemies do like 13 million points of damage. Um, and then all you do is just buy better gear and you can kind of brute force your way through it. So, yeah. But in terms of the puzzle solving in the dungeons, it is very interesting because it does it. And maybe this is just my way of the, approaching it. Like it never gave you. Like, you know how you go to a dungeon and it like. And for example, if you've got like a web swinging power or like a grappling hook, for instance. Um, the first thing you get to in the dungeon will be like, oh, look, there's a big sign that says grapple hook here. Like it, it didn't have that first step. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Like there's a, a couple of the snowboarding ones where you're required to like grind on this rail. but doesn't tell you you can grind on the rail on the rail you kind of like just get to this cliff and it's like oh shit how do i get past it and then you kind of just work it out um there's no big sign telling you what to do but and and i did really enjoy that but towards like the latter half of the game it gets very samey it's like oh this dungeon like i knew all the puzzles like like 20 minutes ago you don't need to keep showing it and that kind of really drags it down and the really big problem i have with this game is just it overstays its welcome, like, a lot. Like, everything just kind of, especially towards the end, just feels grindy and repetitive and, oh, we're doing this again. It's like, oh, we're doing this, but I'm doing it four times instead of two times. And it's, because it, 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 it's not exactly the shortest game. I think I put 20, 25 hours into it. And it does, it just overstays itself. It could be half the amount of time with half the amount of dungeons, and it would probably be, it'd be fantastic. I could be like, cool, I'm satisfied, I didn't want any more. But it does overstay itself and it does like in the first half of the game, there's like no real story. It's just you're kind of just hanging around doing the dungeons. And then they do put in this story about the new mayor is trying to weaponize the magic. And it's kind of, oh, yeah, no, it's a bit stereotypical as well. And I didn't really like that. I like just the completing the dungeons, hanging out with some of the people in the nighttime. And then kind of that kind of loop. But. The loop just kind of overstays itself and no bueno for Steven. And also the soundtrack as well. Like it's pretty dull and boring. Like there were definitely parts where it was like on dungeon to dungeon, it doesn't change the soundtrack. Like different dungeons don't have different soundtracks. Like each dungeon, like all 25 dungeons have the same pretty much background noise and it gets really flat because it's just background music and it, it kind of a little bit synth wave, but it's just, dull synth right there are no highs there's no lows there's no crescendo sound when you complete something there's no epic boss battles if you're in a boss there's no combat music when you're in combat like it just feels very bland very bleh um and maybe that's the intention of the game maybe it's just what it's designed to do and do that but i don't know well i didn't find it very engaging Um, And there's only like five different types of enemies as well. So it gets very, very simple, very, very fast. Um, But uh, but I I say that. um, I still really enjoyed it, though. Eight out of ten. Did you? It really doesn't sound like it. Yeah, I think I think it's because I had such a great time in the first half of the game. Like, I really was enjoying it. I was enjoying the puzzle solving. I was enjoying exploring. And then you kind of get past that hump. And it's like, oh, it's the same. 
I'm like, nah, maybe the next one will be different. Ah, oh, shit, it's the same. Oh, my nah, next one will be different. Ah, oh, fuck, it's the same. Like, it's... And then you're like, and then I got to the end and I'm like, oh, it's kind of racing towards the end type of thing. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm glad I went through it, but it went for too long. Yeah. Kind of like when you've got a really big bowl of pasta that like you really like, but then it's like, I'm done. I've eaten too much. Now I feel sick. No such thing. There is no pasta limit. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, the, but there is a Dungeons and Dragons limit. You know what? You're right, Pat. I think I will change this from an eight to a seven. What a very oh, also as well, like, Yeah, I'm getting angry today. Um, maybe Stevie hungry. Um, but I also hated like the art style in this as well. It was like oversaturated, <laughs> cell shaded. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Oh, I did fucking hate the art style though. <laughs> no, like literally, like, like as I'm looking at my notes here, and the first thing I write, hate the art style. So that's literally probably. And I think I remember writing that as soon as I booted up the game and had the first cut thing. Like I just, it's just so oversaturated for like. And All right, let me have a look at how this shading. game looks. Yeah. It, I encourage, like, in the viewers at home, if you're driving, just pull your phone out and use it while you're going 110 on the freeway. Um, <laughs> no, 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 better yet, of... better yet uh, roll down the window and ask the person driving next to you. Oh, uh, yeah, ask them what they think, yeah. Um, <laughs> buy a billboard, put it on there, ask them if they think it's good. But it, I, I, I don't know. doesn't it, like it, cheap-looking games. <laughs> Everything needs to be AAA slop for him. No, I didn't say that at all. But, but you can see it's, like, oversaturated, right? Like, it's oversaturated cell shading. Like, it, look at an actual, like, gameplay trail. Oh, maybe not a gameplay, but look, there's this... It just... No, no, I get it. I'm looking at it, and there's... It's not oversaturated is a problem. There's... It's, like, lacking in details in certain ways. Like, I looked, maybe, at, maybe I, looked at a cafe, I looked at a building that had a cafe sign on it, and a lot of the outlines for the lettering of the word cafe are getting cut off. Maybe it's that. Maybe there's, like, there's no black outlines. Maybe there's, I don't know. I'm, I'm I got, look, and I, I understand it's a. This is a subjective thing. I'm happy to, to wear the fact that this game just it doesn't look like a game that I like. I think the, um, I think I the art like style so- itself is nice. It's just not hitting it uh, completely. There, there's something, and I don't know what it is. Um, it doesn't vibe with me. And the people's faces look weird as well, but I can't tell this because they got big eyes. Um. But anyway, look, that, that is what it is. Like, I, I did enjoy this game. It's a rough recommendation. Like, maybe I'd recommend people play it for, like, a couple of hours, and if they like it, play it for a couple more hours. And then when you kind of feel that, okay, I'm done with it, put it down. There's nothing different happens. But, yeah, like, I, overall, I had a good time with it. It just overstayed its welcome. Um, and I'm very glad I got this game. Oh, once again, I'm loving Game Pass. Phil Summer, I knew. Um, but this is a very... Game Pass game, if that makes sense. See, I don't know if it does, but thank you. Any any follow up from you, Seth? Or otherwise, because uh, you'll be the next one talking about uh, Kinetsugami. I I think I'm ready to talk about Kinetsugami. Cool. So cocoon. <laughs> Damn. Not here. Not like <laughs> this. <laughs> Got him. No, t- um, t- 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 tell me about. T- tell me about Kinetsugami. Yeah, so Kanichigami was uh, one of those games Capcom announced a little while ago where it, it was kind of like an action tower defense sort of game uh, where you uh, saved villagers from a uh, 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 blight that was going around their villages. And that sounds it, almost like Monster Hunter, but why would Capcom make a game that's almost like Monster Hunter but not? Uh, they no, they sometimes it. want to release other games. I know it's a weird concept, but they need to... They need to take Surf, the money from Surf, Monster Hunter and put Surf, it into something else. Be very careful with what, you ne- with what you say next. Monster Hunter helps fund other games because Monster Hunter is that good. Play on. But yeah, it's um, sort of Pikmin-y as well in that you take um, the villagers that you help and you give them different roles. Like very early on, the only ones you really have are like uh, wood, Woodcutter, which is they start using an axe to uh, chop away at the demons that invade at night time. Or you have an archer who's good at taking down aerial enemies. And the whole concept is that uh, during the daytime, you do preparations. You go help the villagers. Uh, you give them their jobs. You put them around in placements you'll, you need. Uh, you go around and collect extra points so that you can funnel them into uh, carving a path for the uh, shrine maiden to go from one end of the stage to the other end. And uh, she only moves during the daytime. And then at nighttime, a demon starts it. Demons start coming out uh, through uh, the gates at the end of the level, 
And later on, they start placing more gates, so you've got to defend, like, two or three different points at once. And, uh, yeah, so it just becomes, like, hold everything off and make sure that the Shrine Maiden doesn't die during the night. And uh, then spend a day again collecting all the points you got from killing the demons, shred the path again, try to get her to the end, and just kind of that sort of loop. And it's, it's pretty fun. For a while, it felt like it was getting a little bit too samey, like, you do a stage, then you do a boss fight, then you do a stage, and you do a boss fight, and every time you completed a boss fight, uh, you would uh, uh, unlock a new job for villagers to do. So, like, early on, I said woodcutter and uh, archer, and then after that, you unlock, like, monks who can set down um, no movement zones on the enemies, and then you also get, like, sumo wrestlers later down the line. So, as you're progressing the game, you're constantly unlocking more and more things, and... Uh, uh, it, it just felt like the sameness uh, was coming. Oh, so, are you having are you a Persona X smoke alarm moment? <laughs> yeah, no, like <laughs> shit, he's on the reference. I, I think there was a smoke alarm going off here. Give me one second. So, yeah, that's the fire alarm dealt with now. Um, anyway. Yeah, the, the sameness was coming from uh, the main character's movement. Like, all I really had was block, two jump attacks, and then, like, uh, three combos on the ground. And going through a few stages, it was like, yeah, this is okay, but it's getting a little bit too samey in what I can do as a player. But um, I'm about a third of the way through the game now. And a third of the way through the game, you unlock the ability to upgrade the character and get him more combos and more different, uh, more stances and go from just a regular block to a parry uh, being able to be pulled off now and having long range options. So it's opened up. I haven't played since it's opened up, but um, I'm excited to go back in and give it a try now that I have more tools at my disposal that I can unlock. It, it was a really odd amount of time though. I think it was like six to seven hours you go through just having very basic abilities before they're like, okay, you can start doing things for yourself now. But Something I also kind of appreciate is that it, it isn't just doing the get the shrine maiden from one end of the level to the other end sort of thing. There's There's been a couple of um changes to the formula in stages. Like one of them, a demon comes out at night and just straight up possesses her. So the goal of that level is to get a certain amount of um uh, points by having your villagers attack enemies because it, um since she's possessed, your main character can only move around as a ghost. So you just have to rely on the villagers uh, killing demons to collect the, the, the points from them and then go dump all, all the points into that uh, um, demon that's possessing her. Uh, there's another one that's... Uh, the last level I did was uh, you've got uh, five boats and you just got to spread people out along the boats and then just survive through the night uh, as uh, it, some demons are coming in to in, uh, try and take you all out so they're doing uh, different sorts of levels than just hey get from one end of the level to the other end and those sort of shakeups have been uh really appreciated but yeah up until the point where i was i've just been kind of playing it and going like i enjoy this and this is this but it's at a level where it's just barely scratching the surface of where it's like yeah this is uh, the kind of game that i enjoy but not like i really really enjoy it it's just like yeah, no, this is uh, this is good. I'm enjoying my time with it, but it's not um, it's not something I'd really heavily recommend to people because this is kind of like very specifically in my area of uh, games that I enjoy. Yeah, because I played the demo of this, and it was uh, I can't remember if I talked about it on this uh, podcast or my um other podcast, Past Builders Lounge. But it's like one part tower defense, one part Devil May Cry combos. Yeah, uh, and as a do you feel like it does the combos justice? Like, because I think I only played the demo for like an hour. Like, it's a long demo, but like, I kind of, oh, okay, I got this. Was trying to say, not for me, all the best. Uh, yeah, no, the combos are just kind of very basic, which is why it was up to this point. I was starting to get a little iffy on it. Um, but because yeah, it's just for for like six, seven hours, it's just very basic. Just do square triangle or square 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 triangle, and just kind of uh, mow through the enemies um, as best as you, ca uh, as you can while playing it. But it wasn't like, it wasn't firing it uh, on the dopamine sensors for me super hard. It was just like, yeah, no, this is fine. 
but not like getting super invested in the combat of the game. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. But yeah, this is something that since since it is a demo, like I really heavily recommend people go and give that demo a try because it is pretty hefty. You get like I think you get two stages on a boss fight in it. Do you get character customization or uh, level up? Uh you get you you get to see the bones of um how the level up system works, but only for the villagers, not for um the main character himself. Because yeah, the main character customization is like deeper into the game than that. But it it has been nice to go like yeah, every level uh, that I complete, I'm um I'm unlocking new gameplay elements uh, as I'm going. But yeah, no, I don't really have a lot more to say about the game. Just like yeah, if since the demo is out, definitely give it a shot just to see if it's for you. Um, I'm going to continue playing it because I am enjoying it enough to see it through and finish every game we start. Yep, and it's not a purchase I regret because it was a cheaper release game. It wasn't. Capcom was smart enough and didn't put this out at full price. Um, but right now it's sitting at like a 7 out of 10 for me. Oh. Um, I was going to say something, but I can't remember what it was. Um, how did Because in the demo, it felt very. Not 2D, but. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. I it's, don't know it's, all, I'm it's almost isometric, but you do have control of the camera in some respects. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it, it's like the camera's panning over a diorama set, which I think is what they used to, to model the game. Because uh, oh, I've seen cool. development videos where they're like, hey, here's all the diorama sets and like all the little props we made and then blew up to have like proper um, models in the game for how those would react. Yeah, okay. Actually, that seems pretty cool. Yeah, no, it, it seems like a really interesting development cycle. It's an interesting game. Um, can't heavily recommend it, but do do try it out if you can. Cool. Uh, right. Uh, I guess we shift from here back to Steve, unfortunately. But he gets to talk about Yay. Cocoon. Um, yeah, Cocoon. I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Oh, this is Famous a very short. Words. That's what I say about my uh, son. To- that's what I say to every girl I go on a date with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you win. Sorry. <laughs> Got him. Uh, so Cocoon is a... Another Game Pass game, another fantastic one. And I was kind of feeling a bit like a needed a palate cleanser, a bit more puzzly type of thing um, after Dungeons of Hinterberg. So, and I heard very good things about this. I heard it was very short. Um, so I, I picked it up and played it. Um, and the essential premise of the game is you're this weird fucking cicada thing and you're carrying these orbs around, but you can go into the orbs in certain places. Uh, and there's a lot of layering you can do. Like you bring the green orb into the red orb, you can unlock new piles, or if you have the blue orb, you can bring that into the green orb and then bring it into the red orb and you can solve the puzzle that way. It's got a lot of depth. Um, I had so many moments where, like, I was getting the shits with the game because it's, 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 it's only puzzles. There's no combat. There's no dialogue. There's no real story here type of thing. Like, you can kind of work things out from um, the cinematography and just like context clues type of thing, but I don't really, uh, the ending kind of alludes to what you're doing, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, but you're just solving these puzzles by using these different orbs, which are the cocoons, um, lack of a better word. <clears throat> oh, I've got a frog in my throat. Broke. Um, and it's, there are so many times in this game where I was like, I'm stuck, I'm going to have to look it up. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just take five seconds. And I'd like put the controller down, I'd watch, I'd look around and I'm like, oh, this is how you do it. Um, and it, it does kind of, like you might feel you have to backtrack, but like nine times out of 10, you don't. There is a lot of, especially towards the end when you get like four of the orbs, there's a lot of like bringing the right orb into the right orb, which means you've got to go three or four layers deep, which can kind of get, you think it gets a bit complex, but it's actually not that really complex. Every puzzle is like very logical and everything flows very well. It, and like 90% of the time, it does follow that the simplest solution is the one that you're looking for. And I really appreciated that. I did have to look it up, the answer for one of the puzzles. But that was because um, I didn't think I could, like, just the way that the camera is positioned, I didn't think I could go behind something, but it turns out I could. And I felt very silly after that. The art style in this game is gorgeous. Like the particle effects, the background scenery going on, um, the different interactions that your Takata character will have with the background as they're traveling around 
gorgeous. The light effects, oh, it's gorgeous. The sounds in the background, the sounds are, there's a crescendo as you're traveling, like direct polar opposite to um, Dungeons of Hinterburg. And it's very, as things are happening, it expands and goes down. And depending on which environment you're in, it'll change. And it just, Ah, oh, it's the sound design is incredible in this game. I think it's probably one of the best games in terms of sound design I've played in like quite some time. Um, but then at the same time, I don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff usually because I'm not an audiophile. Uh, but yeah, this is a fantastic puzzle game, and like even if it wasn't on Game Pass, I highly recommend it. Like it, I cannot like it's very short as well. It's only like four or five hours. Um, if you really want to, you can play it in one sitting. Um, I might even encourage people if you have the time to be played in one sitting, because if you, let's say you put it down for a day or two um, and you pick it back up, you can kind of be like, oh, like, where was I? What was I doing? What's the next step? Like, there's no indicators on the map of like where to go next. And that can be a bit like, especially because I think I took two days off and I was like, what am I? Where am I? What am I doing? How do I play this game again? Um, but it's like very simple. There's literally two buttons in this game there's the joystick to move and then there's like any button will to pick up the orb or interact with something like it's very simple highly recommended very very good game everybody you know what stop listening to this podcast actually you know what no just keep listening to this podcast but buy it now um, i think it's only out on xbox and steam at the moment actually no i'm looking at it now out on everything it's even out on the xbox one and the playstation 4 um so you last year. Oh, this came out last year. I thought it came out um, this year. Ah. But no, it's a fantastic game. Cannot recommend it enough. Very good. Excellent. Nine well, out that's ten. really good to know. Yeah. With that, we come to the end of Run the Lounge this week, which seems like we're on a shockingly good pace. If this was a speed run, it would be a gold split. Uh, we get to move on to part two for this week, which is, of course, the news. Um, starting off, Sonic Movie 3 gets a trailer, and Yay, holy finally. shit, Jim Carrey's such a phenom. Man literally can't be stopped. As as usual, they keep proving that Shadow is the coolest character in all of fiction. I have four out of all fiction. To say. Um, I've got a big problem with this trailer. Um, the fucking trailer summarizes the whole movie. You haven't seen the movie? How do you know it summarizes the whole thing? It, it literally... So, the, there's, a, there's... Sonic's enjoying his life. Um... There's the introduction of Shadow as the bad guy. They fight Shadow, but they lose. They go to Eggman. Um, Eggman does his transformation into what he looks like in the games. They team up with Eggman, they beat Shadow. And then the, probably the post-credits thing is Eggman and his dad team up with Sonic fucking 4. They that's not his dad, that's his grandpa. Movie. Whatever. You sure it's his grandpa? I thought it was like Papa's and like his dad. I think it said Paw Paw, like grandpa. But yeah, it's, Wait, uh, we'll it's supposed out. to be Gerald Robotnik, which is... um his grandfather, and they just straight up show a scene of Maria dying. They will shoot that little girl in this movie. You know, there's no way a movie like this where someone dies. She'll come back. See, we know, we know that Maria's going to die and that's going to set Shadow off. We know this. Or like Ed- Eggman betrays the gang and then they team up with Shadow. Like, we know all this is going to happen. There could be more stuff they haven't watch. shown. It still looks like, fucking cool. I'll give you that. I, I think all we know is like the first two acts and there'll be a third act twist. Because well, Shadow, the isn't, like, Shadow fucking... isn't going to be the villain the entire time. He's going to have to join the good guys by the end. Yeah, when Eggman and his granddad team up. But what do they do that'll make them all come together? Hmm? Answer me that. Them. What's the Sonic Adventure 2 bad guy? Like Chaos or something? Is it what it's called? No, BioLizard just shows up right at the end to just go, hey, I'm going to crash this, uh, the spaceship into the Earth and kill everyone. I don't think I understand how Sonic... Finally, a Adventure relatable work. villain. <laughs> really an Avengers level threat <laughs> but yeah like I'm very excited I don't want to, I'm very excited for this movie I just don't like how that trailer was presented I really like the it, Keanu Reeves only gets like three lines in this trailer but they all sound really good I, I am excited yeah, for cool. Keanu Reeves to continue playing Shadow for, throughout the movie also they gave him the motorbike which is just really cool the motorbike is fucking cool. It's very cool. They, they I like how he like he, he when he runs, he does that slide thing as well. Fucking very cool. Yeah, he's doing the um, actual air skating. Yeah, I think my very favorite part is cool. that he doesn't have human teeth. Oh, that's always ah. great. <laughs> they missed out with that one. We got to move on. I, I I have nothing to contribute to this conversation in any like meaningful way. No, I'm just 
I'm just excited to watch this PG-13 movie. <laughs> that is, on the trailer, is uh, classified as for being for YouTube kids. <laughs> Excellent. Love that for you. Uh, next up, we have some studio news. Uh, we have an independent studio called Goon Squad, and holy shit, who cleared that name? It was me. I did it for the bit. Uh, You're well, weak, well I done. Said. Uh, well, why don't you explain the bit and tell us about the story? Or don't. That's fine too. He's gooning. He's gooning. <laughs> Sorry, I gooned too hard. What happened? <laughs> uh, not Jesus. Funny. Is that what that smell is? God damn. Um, no, I was going to ask you to fire alarm. I, I was going to ask you to uh, run through the news article behind the name Goon Squad. Oh, I didn't read that. I just thought it was really funny to go, "Hey, there's a new studio that opened named Goon Squad." Uh, well, that's that's valid. Uh, headquartered in Germany and uh, head up, which I have don't think I've ever heard of, uh, is spinning off the development team into that studio. Uh, that's basically all the news you need. Um, very funny name though. Surprised that they got away with that. Uh, next up. It probably means something different in German. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it does. Um, Foam Stars going free to play. I, I'll be honest, I thought Foam Stars was free to play. No, it was a... I thought um, it was as well. It, it was a... a uh, I, I think it was fully priced? Or it might have been discount priced? But anyway, you had to pay for it, and then it had um, ludicrous uh, uh, skin prices that were like just as expensive as the game. If not more wow, so. it's almost Ooh. like most games these days. Yeah, it was really bad. So it going free to play is smart. It will not save the game. And it's not on Steam, so I can't tra track the Steam DB numbers on it. <laughs> uh, well, it's going live service in... Oh, sorry, free to play. They're already sort of live service -y. But going free to play October 4th. So just over a month. So if, you're really, if, you, if you really want to give the developers your money... Do it fast. <laughs> will it going will it going free to play be something that makes you interested in it, Seth? I might give it a try, honestly. Actually, no, I think I already have it because it was on PlayStation Plus the month it came out. Oh. Uh, cool. Well, uh, we're gonna move on. Uh Avowed gets delayed. So I, I vaguely remember Avowed because we, we we've talked about it a couple times, but what what was this what was the main draw for Avowed? Uh, it's that new Obsidian game, like the first person, um, like from the makers of like Fallout New Vegas and The Outer Worlds. Uh, it's yeah, Outer Worlds, got like yeah, dialogue yeah. choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's you know what the game looks like. It's first person. There's magic. Kind of feels like it might be a bit of a Skyrim type of thing, but they're not calling it Skyrim. Like just at the same time that like like The Outer Worlds was trying to kind of be like a serious Borderlands. Ah, I don't think Borderlands is appropriate. Mass Effect, maybe? But anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. It was, it was more yeah. like Mass Effect-y. Slash yeah, cutting yeah. Starfield's lunch before Starfield came out. Yeah, pretty much. Or three years before Starfield came out. Um, but yeah, it, it's in that kind of, that same vein. But this is like a medieval fantasy magic setting. Um, I'm, I'm very much excited for it. It's very interesting that the way that they justified the bit being delayed to February 25 is like, oh, there's too many games coming out. Um, which is like very surprising, like Microsoft saying that, because if it got like no games until like there i will admit there is like what six games coming out that month and it's probably as smart from a financial decision mm. um i don't know i, I will they, say they it's a games it can get they also have to yeah. cram call of duty and uh, um uh tomb no not tomb raider um indiana jones in the next four months true and on top of all that, it is, it is very sad to hear about the impending closure of Obsidian off the back of what was probably going to be a very successful game. How do we define successful game for Xbox? <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't even have to be successful. They're going to get closed down anyway. Like it's, the game, the, thank you for releasing this game. All the best. Yeah. Which is now, very, now, very now, sad please, for me. To hear. Now, 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 please enjoy this farm. <laughs> it's just, it's just a development studio to make more Call of Duty guns. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to move swiftly along, but yeah, so delayed till next year. Um, Steve's interested. That's cool. That should be a ringing endorsement that, like, one of the few people that play games on Xbox uh, says that the next game on Xbox looks good. Uh, next up, we have a Dragon Ball game. Uh, Dragon Ball Project. Is it, is it called Project Multi? That seems yeah. kind of weird. 
It is. It is a weird name. Uh, don't like that. Nope, nope, nope. I love that your tagline is Dragon Ball Unite is real. And you look at the art. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon Ball Unite is very yeah, much it, real. It's, I don't know whether it's just it's made in the same engine or a very similar engine or MOBAs kind of all look the same, but it No, MOBAs don't all look the like same. Unite is a kind of different compared to what you'd expect from League of Legends or Dota. It's a very simplified ah. version to get more casual people into it and make it more mobile friendly. And um, it looks ah. like this Dragon Ball game is going that same direction. Hmm. They, the that, beta also. is on at the moment. I think you had to like, I think you had to sign up already um, to get invited into it. But I've watched someone play the game and it seems fine. It's got some fun character interactions. Like if you're in, your, in the waiting lobby, 18 will uh, call Krillin and Krillin will like bumble around on the phone call with her. It, and it's kind of cute seeing that happen. So they've got cute animations going throughout. It looks like there's some effort being put into this. It's true. Well, you, you'd hope so. I mean, you, you hate it when a game comes out there's been no effort put into. You'd, you wouldn't be surprised by how many cash grab Dragon Ball games there are. Do I have to remind you oh. of just the Breakers, the hit game that I have played for two hours? <laughs> Hold on, let, let's, let's not go tossing out Game of the Year titles like that, all right? You're right, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, I shouldn't so um, calmly throw that game's name out. True. Uh, you, you only invoke it when you really want to win an argument. Uh, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. We are going to move on. Blue Protocol ending service uh, and the Western release is cancelled. Uh, this is one of those, I think I vaguely remember something that we've talked about in the news in the past, but uh, I'll be honest, you could have told me that it wasn't out yet and I would have believed you, so it's kind of funny that it's ending service in, what's that, four months away, five months away? And not even getting a Western release. Yeah, five months away. Uh, yeah, I, we would have talked about this before because this was a MMO I was interested in giving a try. It's, um, yeah, it's by Bandai Namco and it was kind of Sword Art Online coded in how, um, it graphically looked. Um, so yeah, I, I was kind of keen in giving it a try, but it was announced years ago and it only came out in Japan. And if we talked about it, um, Amazon Games had picked up the licensing, um, to localize it in the Western world, but they they delayed it because they were starting to go through everything and censoring a lot of the things in the game, which takes time to do. And it's been so it's been so long that I think um Bandai Namco was banking on the Western release uh, bundling money into the game by this point, and since that hasn't happened yet, they're at a point where they need to cancel the game. Ugh, rough, rough indeed. Yeah, kind of a shame because I was looking forward to giving this a, sh a shot. Well, if you subscribe to the, uh, what's the one, Don't Kill Games, whatever that petition is, uh, then maybe you'll still be able to. Yeah, maybe uh, we, we, we will yeah, force them into, into releasing the source code. I think um, I'd have better cool. luck getting a oh, VPN well. and playing the Japanese version. You cannot read Japanese, my friend. I don't need to be able to read it to play it. I just press buttons and hope that it works. What's the fucking point? That's how I play games in English. Uh, next up, Homura Hime, launching in early 2025. Yeah, this is neat. Um, uh, this was one of the first games we've talked about uh, on the podcast news dockets. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've, I've just been uh, uh, interested in it uh, this entire time. Like, they did a playable demo of it not too long ago after it went silent for a few years. And having a like, yeah, no, it's coming out early 2025 release date is, is nice to see. I'll, I'll be giving this a shot. Cool. Hope it. I uh, hope it has more than six hundred players at launch. It can't do that bad, can it? I mean, maybe. Uh, next up, we have some Monolith Soft news. Uh, I have like zero context for this. Uh, what? What am I? They do Xenoblade Chronicles. Ah, okay. And so very good, uh, studio, very hiring... good studio. Very. I don't know what their magic they do to make those games run on the Switch that the Switch is combusting into flames. I'd I'd say run on the Switch is pretty. Generous. Oh, it's... Maybe I'm comparing it to Pokemon Scarlet Violet, which I'm currently replaying. It's fucking good. Like, I got very little slowdown, very little frame issues um, compared to Pokemon Violet, which I'm getting fucking now. Um, disgusting. But anyway, go on. What's going on? Are we, are we applying, boys? We should make a video game. No, we shouldn't. Okay. I, I, know, I know where this is leading. You're just going to say you're going to be the ideas guy. 
and then I have to do all the work. But I am the idea. I'm doing all the ideas work. Ah, yeah. I really, I really don't know what pieces to pick up after, uh, after all this. Just um, leave them on the floor and uh, continue with the news docket. Understandable. Um, if Steve does want to know what magic goes on at that studio, uh, he can find out because they're hiring for a new RPG. Uh, anyway, that was the point of the news. We are moving on. Project Mena uh, has a incubator pro- uh, program announced, which, I mean, this, this is kind of cool. Uh, we've seen... Was it... Uh, See, this is going to trip me up now because I know that we've discussed some Mena project, but I don't remember if it was under PlayStation or if it was like a more indie showcasey type thing. Um, Do you I guys think, remember? I think you might be mixing it up with how PlayStation has a China Hero project. No, 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 no. This one was definitely like showcasing uh, African developers, but I don't remember if it was under the PlayStation umbrella or if it was its own thing. I'm not 100% sure. Nah, it must have been its own thing. Anyway, uh, cool project. Yeah, no, um, this is just like a continuation of PlayStation trying to branch off into other regions and supporting them making video games, and that, that's just a really cool thing to see. They, yeah. Like I mentioned before, they had the China Hero Projects, now they're doing um, Middle East and North Africa to try and um, get uh, people developing games in those regions. Re- really good, good of them to be supporting developers like that and trying to incubate new regions. Yeah, and really good of them to be supporting new players by increasing the price. But we'll get to that. I mean, we can jump the gun a little and do that one next. <laughs> uh, I mean, only if you want to. I don't mind. We will get to it when we get to it. Next up, uh, Valve's Deadlock finally gets its, its like, official announcement. Uh, does anyone, like, I... So, I, my story with this is uh, I was chatting to a friend who, he and I used to play Dota like years ago, and he mentioned like, oh man, I've just been playing so much Deadlock recently, and it's, it's awesome, it's amazing. And me at the time, what's Deadlock? Never heard of Deadlock before. That was about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and now all I see is Deadlock news. Yeah, it seems like it was like very, very um, closed beta, um, and now the floodgates are open. Yeah. And now that uh, the floodgates are open. interesting. Now that the floodgates are open, everyone's just like, yeah, no, I've been playing this for a while. I, I just wasn't allowed to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, the main points to discuss is that this is the latest Valve game, so that should already... Uh, you could think of this like Half-Life 3, uh, if you will. Um, I'd like to think but- of it as Portal 3 instead. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But it's a Mobery shootery type game made by Valve, has been... Well, Thousands of people have been playing it for a couple months now, but has now finally been officially revealed to be uh, the game that everyone kind of knew about. But really good kind of underground marketing campaign. Uh, amazing that Valve basically doesn't need to do any marketing for this because situations like what I just mentioned with my friend are kind of doing a lot of the marketing lift anyway of people going, huh, Deadlock, what's that? And then suddenly it just like spreads via word of mouth. I think um, even just the idea of, hey, Valve is doing a new game will get people talking. <laughs> Valve is making Artifact 2. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Love that for them. <laughs> I miss Artifact. I know, I know that people kind of figured out the strategy like immediately and then the, then the game became just super unfun for anyone not running that strategy. But Artifact was idea, a card game, right? It was. It was the card game. The That's idea the point of the booster packs. Really liked. You break the meta. But it's not really breaking the meta when the meta became one strategy and it was so good that there's no way to break that one strategy. That's on the card game developers to figure out how to break it. Yeah, and then Valve gave <laughs> up. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, is anyone else interested in Deadlock? Because I know that I, I am, but I've heard too many people talk about it referencing Dota 2 that I, I cannot in good conscience start this game because I might just accidentally lose a couple weeks of my life. I've heard similar type of things as well. Um, but at the same time, I'm not a big fan of like multiplayer games as a rule for me anyway. So I, it's probably one of those things that if other people were playing it, I could be encouraged to play. But like it's a, if I'm going to get kicked from another lobby for having a controller, I'm not playing it. Fuck you. Yeah, I've been never be hearing back and forth between this game is pretty fun to this game is abs- uh, really horrible. So it's now entered that realm of I need to try it for myself just to see how it is. So I'll definitely give it a shot. Just, just to see how it is. That's cool. Mm. 
we will move on. We're going to move on to the price increase stuff that we talked about. Uh, we'll start with the PS5 price increase. Why not? Uh, that was one we hinted at before. It's getting a, uh, well, uh, it's like, it's getting a price increase, but like a whole bunch of stuff in PlayStation is getting a price increase. Uh, and this, this hurts because this, this is not normally how something that's what now, like five years old, uh, at least, at least four years old. Yeah. I think it's four at this point. Yeah. Uh, how something 2021, four years I old. believe. It's been to 2020 maybe? Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Either way, anyway, very, anyway. very, very weird to see something that came out four years ago now go up in price without, like, it's it's not it's not like a second hand market that suddenly demand's gone up. It's just suppliers are just like, hey, money, please. Yeah, no, I think this is because um the yen's gone because it's specifically in Japan, so it's the yen is so weak that they're um increasing the price over there to disin. Uh, dissuade people overseas importing a PS5 cheaper than buying it in their home region and then scalping them. But it is still an absurdly shitty move to make, considering they're just fucking over the Japanese market doing this. Yeah. And the the obvious solution they should have gone with is why don't they just decrease the price of the PS5 in those other regions? Surely that's a good business decision four years after release. You would think that. You really would think that. Uh, well, MSRP of a PlayStation 5 is now uh, 79,980 yen, which at least in New Zealand dollary dues is... Actually, Australia is probably like 100 to 1, right? I think so, or it's pretty close to that. Roughly, yeah. Yeah, because we... I think it's, a, uh, it's, it's better, I think. Better? Because we, we, we always sort of floated, one, We When I last checked it, mm-hmm. like floated kind of like 90 two ish and so you, you just sort of round it up to 100 to 1 but um either way let's put it let, let's just assume that that is about the right amount that that would put it at like 700 and like uh, i always be, just like be 799 dollars yeah that was about what i was going to throw it at which definitely seems high for a four-year-old gaming console yeah it's it's a it's Absurd, and um, I think the price increase as well was uh, well. It says here the price increase for the PS5 was by thirteen thousand yen, so it's a pretty steep um increase. That's a hundred and thirty dollars increase there. Yeah, it's pretty rough actually. Uh, look, cost of living, inflation, rah rah rah. Like it, it's easy for how, us to kind of how use the PlayStation that excuse. VR two more expensive than the PS5. Well, I don't know, like, man. It's a collector's item. They only made like ten of those. <laughs> <laughs> one, one for each player. <laughs> because of screens inside it. Got. <laughs> ah, it's a two to one ratio. Um, it's a shame. Yeah, the PSVR is dying. Uh, let's let's release this VR thing that we don't really have any games for. Why isn't anybody buying? Um, Taylor's all all the time. Do you guys not have phones? Uh, anyway, it is not just PlayStation getting a price increase, but Xbox decided. You know what people really love when they can't find games to play on the Xbox. A price increase, so they've also uh, increased the price. Not funny, didn't laugh. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a little bit funny, but that's fine. Uh, Series X has gone up from roughly, real back of the envelope stuff here, 600 bucks, let's say Australian, to like 670-ish bucks Australian. Which again, pretty expensive for a console at this point of its life. Yeah, yeah. The bit that cr- the, the I think the crazier bit to me is that the Series S um has gone up in price because that's in the Japanese market probably the only thing that sells, right? Neither of them sell in the Japanese market. Yeah, well, in that case, price increase is um is just going to make it a collector's item. Put it up higher, I say. Are you really are you, are you really having fun if you're not paying nearly eight hundred dollars for a four year old console? A four year old console with no games. It's got heaps of games. I told you about two games. Fuck you. It's got Game Pass. It doesn't need games. Console I was talking with, about with the no PS5. Or he said $800. Oh, really? That's closer to the, the PS5. Ah, uh, We're talking about the Xbox. Both of them. Neither of them have games. But move on. Silly. It's true. Yeah, games uh, are an endangered species. I'm supp- yeah. Uh, I'm surprised. Like, uh, You reckon we'll get a price increase in the West? No, I think this is all exclusively because of the Japanese yen being um, uh, weaker. 
So they're being punished. Okay. Punished. Yeah, I'd agree. Next up, Ready at Dawn shuts down. Uh, this, this makes me sad. God of War PSP game slapped. Yeah, no, the God of War PSP games were great. Daxa was really good. Um, their only miss was uh, the Order 1886. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did that game. Yeah, and then after that, they got bought out by Meta. Um, and they've just been doing VR stuff since, which I haven't kept track of. But, yeah, it's really sad to see them being shut down because, yeah, back during the PSP games, they were making a lot of really good games. Yeah. I mean, again, it's one of those, like, art versus artist type things of, I'm imagining, given how old the PSP games are now, that a lot of the a lot of the, the heart of that studio has probably just moved on. That's possible, yeah. Still, always sad when a studio shuts down. And, uh, good to move on, first of all. Yeah, yeah. Always sad when a studio shuts down, and even sadder when a studio has to kind of go through the death throes of just axing a bunch of itself uh, to try and avoid shutting down. Uh, and in this one, we get to reset the layoff counter back to zero, or rather episodes since layoffs uh, announced. Because Bungie, axing 220 staff. They did warn yeah, us rough. last year that uh, this was a lever they were going to pull again. I was just about to pull that quote out of my ass. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> Please man. buy Destiny or we'll fire more people. <laughs> this is a threat. <laughs> What's that? You did buy it? All right, I'm f- we'll fire only half of you, man. But yeah, that's it. Look at one, one light the game, one prayer. The slight upside of this is that um, 155 people are being integrated into um, other Sony studios instead of being completely laid off. They're just going to be leaving Bungie to go join like the likes of like Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Sucker Punch, and all those other studios. And I think that it was like 70 people or 50 to 70 people were going to be splintered off into doing their own. Um, small studio that's going to pick up one of uh, Bungie's incubated uh, projects that never left the ground. Oh, yeah. So there's that's, some slight upsides, but there's, yeah. it, it still sucks for the people that did get completely laid off and don't have a job now. Very true. Very true. Very sad. Uh, even sadder is uh, the reports of how, how the CEO has been... Uh, Really trying to, you know, be there for the employees he's had to let go. Really just one of the one, one of the common folk, you know, one of the workers in there grinding with the best of them. Um, failing to mention the uh, roughly two, two and a half million dollars he spent on uh, vintage cars in the past couple of years, which unhinged. If you're a CEO of a, if you're the CEO of a gaming studio, if I can be a gamer like the rest of us, you don't need vintage cars. Like Jim Ryan visiting London studio to celebrate his departure yeah. a week before being laying off the entire studio and so shutting true. them down. Pete Parsons would invite people to come look at his cars a week before laying them off. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> and none of the Bungie employees are very happy about that fact. And Pete Parsons head was why. wanted on a pike. Yeah. I think my favorite part, well, no, favorite is not the right word, but it's, it's the same. If you have a bingo card, follow along at home and go to the message Pete Parsons sent out to Bungie. Uh, starting off with, this morning, I'm sharing with you all some of the most difficult changes we've ever had to make as a studio. Which, man, it's, uh, I just, I, I hate that bingo square that's always like, we've, we have to do some, we have to make some really tough decisions. We've, we've, um, uh, I, I know, I know this is absolutely terrible for you, but, uh, but you're fired. Just, I don't know. Grim. Any kind of trying to be empathetic as a CEO while also firing like a double digit portion of your workforce. It just, it does not come across as genuine to me. Yeah. Him specifically needs to be let go from Bungie. I feel like he's so scared of the Sony takeover happening that he's just ruining lives and ruining the studio. Do you reckon it's I'm one of those things sh- that the second he if, he if he goes like that that'll be it like Sony's just gonna eat them. But if he stays and Sony eats them, he gets a golden parachute. Yeah, so he might as well stay then. Maybe I guess. maybe him going will be enough to stave off the um the price tag Sony had of like their profit margins. Like he's he's eating so much money of Bungie's profits that if he went, <laughs> Bungie would suddenly be in the green. Ah, now that's I I, I like that idea. That that's the same. That's the same energy as 
Um, Elon is running Twitter into the ground uh, intentionally. Mm. Don't think that's how it works, but yeah, right. No, it's not. He owns Twitter. He could just close it tomorrow if he really wanted. Anyway, very he sad news. So lucky. Um, God, but if, if he runs it into the ground, then he can do it as a tax write-off. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! You know what? You're right. That's that's so smart. Um, anyway, I for one am glad that uh, Pete Parsons just does everything he can to just you know be be one of the one of the one of the blue collars like the rest of us. We need to Definitely French Revolution not. his ass. <laughs> Definitely not uh, uh, one on the shortlist for the guillotine. Next up, uh, I will be honest, I have very little context for the next story, but uh, we have some Hi-Fi Rush IP news. Uh, both of you played Hi-Fi Rush. Great game. Anyone fantastic wanna... game. Game of the year uh, very contender. Mean. Yeah, fair enough. You want to summarize uh, what, what's actually happening with this for me? Yeah, so Craft on the, um, uh, the studio that's uh, known for PUBG, um, they've been wanting to expand into doing more um, AAA games. Uh, in that effort, they released... Uh, what was it? It, it? it was the Dead Space successor um, at last year. That Live Space? No, no, not, not that one. But um, it, it wasn't received very Callisto well. Protocol. But <laughs> Callisto Protocol, that's the one. Thank you. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. Maybe you're gaming his life. Now, Callisto <laughs> Protocol wasn't received very well, but that was more of a developer oversights rather than a publisher oversight because by looking at it you can tell that Crafton pumped a lot of money into that game it, but yeah in their efforts to expand their reach as a um, publisher they've uh, they bought uh, uh, Tango Gameworks from Microsoft and talked them into buying the Hi-Fi Rush IP as well so Microsoft was like yeah no we're not going to use these you can have them and um, in, in that same effort they uh, uh, Crafton has brought back half of the Tango Gameworks uh, uh, developers, while the other half had already found uh, jobs outside of um, Tango since uh, the studio was closed down. So this just, this just feels like an all-around win for Crafton and um, Tango Gameworks. Very happy that this has happened, and they're not just out for good because of Microsoft clo- closing them down. Yeah, very good news. Mm. Yeah, you'll really like to hear that. But yeah, they, they've also come out and said they're going to be doing more to expand the Hi-Fi Rush IP, which means they're probably going to do a sequel soon. Maybe some other stuff as well, some um, merch oh, it ideas. Be soon, and if they just acquired the IP, it'd be 40 years away. I mean, soon as in, like, probably, like, four years away, I guess. Yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, and finally, we have a... Actually, uh, why, don't we, why don't we hit the Shadow trailer now, because that way we can go through the... The lists. Oh yeah, no, the reason I put the Shadow trailer there specifically was because uh, they released this five hours before Gamescom's opening night live, and it, it was the best trailer that was shown all day, in my opinion. It, it's not, nothing that was shown at Gamescom was quite as good as this uh, Sonic X Shadow Generation trailer. It was pretty good. Yeah, it, it, look, I, I, I'll say it fucks. It 100% fucks. The trailer goes through showing new levels for the game, um, all of the abilities you'll be learning uh, throughout the game, like Shadow's uh, Chaos Spears get upgraded. He has an ability where he beats the shit out of a, uh, an enemy to launch him into the air, and then like that's used as a form of um, platforming traversal or hitting switches that are across giant gaps. And then other things like terrain traversal, surfing on top of water, and uh, uh, his symbiote wings that were teased at E3. Also showed at the very end that one of the boss fights in the game is going to be Metal Overlord, which is the final boss from Sonic Heroes, and I was absolutely overjoyed with that one. Uh, congrats. I, I have no context for this, but it seems like you're excited for it, and that makes me excited for you. Yes. Um, last thing I'll mention as well for this is that um, they have a remix of Supporting Me in the background, and uh, after the trailer came out, it came out that... Um, Hit YouTube guitarist uh, Richard E.B. was the uh, was uh, called into the Sega Studios to remix this song, which is really cool to see that um Sega's going into the YouTube minds, finding people that really like their IP and are very good musicians, it's and then going, "Hey, do you want to do something official with us?" The, the YouTube mind. Um, <laughs> I know there's something very very funny about that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Sorry, man. Actually, I'm not sorry, but um, yeah, right on. But yeah, very good trailer. Excited for this game. 
Very cool. We, we can move on to the lists. And uh, also want to point out the uh, Shadow Generations is also a trailer available for YouTube kids. Yeah. <laughs> is it really? They, oh, they saved that one up for a little while. Right, well. Good for them. List time. Why don't we start with THQ Nordic? And I'll be honest, there aren't many uh, on this list. Like, there's a couple that I, that I recognize, but there aren't any that I'm leaping at. What it did remind me of is the fact that Space Marine 2 is slowly getting closer to release. And it's I only, only a couple that, of weeks away, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it is only a couple of weeks away. Um, I haven't seen much. That if there's news out for it, I haven't been keeping up with it, but uh, it's never a good sign for the list when the list makes you think of something that's not on that list. But that's my uh, contribution. Does anyone else have anything that they want to hit on the THQ Nordic Showcase list? They didn't really showcase anything for it except for a teaser, but I'm excited that there's a new Darksiders project coming along. Wasn't that last one like dog shit? Uh, like Darksiders 3? Darksiders 3 um, is just kind of mid, but um, there was that uh, uh, Diablo-style game that I never gave a shot, but apparently that was pretty well-received. Oh, yeah, I forgot they did that. Yeah, the ARP. ARPG, yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, there's, there's a possibility this I'm, might be a remake whoop. of the first one, which, if it is a remake of the first one, is less interesting to me than if they did to the fourth game to follow um, Strife, the fourth horseman they still need to do uh, a solo game for. I'm looking forward to Titan Quest 2. Titan Quest 1 was alright. I enjoyed that game a lot. Um, not sure if that was a good game. Why are we talking about Titan though? Quest, not Titan 4? That's what I want to know. True! Titanfall already has it too. It does. And you know what? One of the greatest games of all time. There, I said it. Like Valve, they should also learn to count to three. <laughs> I, think, I think bigger than that, we just need uh, EA to learn to count uh, down from two. That way they don't try and release two games at the same time. God, I'm yeah, so upset about that, what happened to Titanfall 2. Anyway, we've, I've now sidetracked us from the list twice. Uh, anything else from THQ Nordic? Uh... I might give Epic Mickey a try at some point. It's not something that's very... Uh, it's not on my list enough to go, yeah, I need that right away, but I am kind of keen to give that game a try um, at some point. But yeah, that, that's all from THQ for me. Darksiders and Epic Mickey. <laughs> Nightmare blunt rotation. Uh, that <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Thank you. I try. Um, cool, that's it for that one. Uh, so Gamescom, uh, I will hit the obvious first one. They announced Borderlands 4. This is either a genius marketing play or a nail in the coffin, and it's not even and it's not even like we have any information about it yet. Just because I I don't know. I'm I'm in two minds. There's either the Borderlands movie is going to go excellently, and we're going to double it up with a Borderlands 4 announcement to really increase the hype, or Borderlands movie's gone so terribly. Break glass in case of emergency. Announce Borderlands Four, but don't show any detail. That way, we don't have to say we've got anything prepared. I, I think don't know it's which the first of those one. is more likely. I think it's the first one because a streamer I watch he ran a donation goal where people paid for him to go watch the movie. Um, that's fucking weird, man. <laughs> that's so and, good. And um, yeah, he hit the he hit the goal. Went and watched the movie um a little bit before Gamescom, and then he's like, yeah, no. So the the trailer opens up with a Firebrand logo, which is in the games, but it's heavily featured throughout the movie. So they were opening with that Firebrand logo to be like to certainly be like, hey, look at how look at this. This is from the movie. We're also doing a new Borderlands game. Aren't you excited? Good lord. Oh well, well. I mean, I I'm a sucker for Borderlands games. I'm ready to be heard again. I I just want yeah. Buying like a season pass. I... <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm gonna buy two of them. One for one for me and one for my best friend. I'm sorry, Don't Stephen. <laughs> I didn't ask for it to be honest. I'll buy the game like in two years time when it's like ninety percent off. Yeah, let's wait and see. I know that we talked about how they also wanted to do more in the Tiny Tina space. Um, uh, oh, off yeah. the back of how successful Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is. I, yeah, I, <laughs> it's hard because neither, neither game, okay, other than the season pass, neither of the recent games, actually shit, now that I say that, Tales from the Borderlands 2 was absolutely terrible as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> as soon as they announced Borderlands 3, I bought it immediately, like on the pre-order. 
this one, I, I, I need to see a little bit more of something, you know? I think gameplay-wise, it'll be fine, because G Borderlands 3 was fine gameplay-wise. Yeah. Um, from everything I know about Tiny Tina's Wonderland, that gameplay was also fine. It's just lacking in certain other areas. So that, I think from the shooting, the shooty bang bang side of things, it'll be good. And like, you know, real talk, the DLCs for Borderlands 3 were all great when they weren't. But uh, Krieg was pretty good. Krieg, Krieg was a bit hit and miss. But, um, but when, when they're telling stories unrelated to the two Twitch streamers, it's good. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm more nervous that they do so much work to position Ava as not a piece of shit that makes you want to take a toaster bath through Borderlands 3 even though you get to the end of it, and it's so clear she's going to be a protagonist in the next game. Mm. <laughs> hit, me, hit me with that retcon, guys. <laughs> oh, there's also I, like a, like a frame... Back. Sorry, sorry. there's also like a frame hinting that they're bringing back Handsome Jack for Borderlands 4. Is there a frame? I, I swear I've seen this trailer. I don't remember that frame. It, it's like in that glitchy mess up... Uh, Wait, where is that glitchy mess, actually? It's around the time the um, logo shows up. Um, it, someone went frame by frame there and saw, oh, hey, there's um, Handsome Jack's face with the, um, with the Borderlands arc over his eyes. Oh, great. Pretty cool. Well, yeah, we'll wait and see. I don't want to trash it yet. We don't know anything about it, but God, I want it to be good. <laughs> It's not blind it's, optimism, but there is optimism there. <laughs> but I am blind. No, it's, it's so hard trying to talk about how much of a fan of Borderlands I am, and people are like, oh, but wasn't the movie shit? It's like, well, yeah, but... <laughs> this, you don't but no, one wants, yeah. no one wanted the movie except for Randy Pitchford. Yeah. Uh, is that, I think there was one other in this list that I was kind of intrigued by, Monster too. Hunter? Uh, oh, well, okay. Yes, but you know what? Scrolling through it, I now realize that there is, in fact, Space Marine 2 footage. Oh, yeah, that's, probably where you saw, that's probably where the Space Marine 2 was hitting you. Yeah, that's probably why I was thinking about it. Uh, anyway, that's, that's probably... The, the, those are definitely the, the two biggest points for me. Obviously, Monster Hunter Wilds is in there as well, but Monster Hunter Wilds, I'm... Uh, like, I'm kind of past the point of needing trailers. They could, they could not show any trailers, and I'm still going to get it day one. So. <laughs> Doesn't uh, really have the same impact on, on me. Monster Hunter a little bit. They did, um, they did gameplay streams uh, every day of Gamescom. Game looks fantastic. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's so it, good. It's, it's very interesting to see how they've handled it, because you just go out into the world. Like, you can get quests from being in the village, but... The village is connected to the open areas. So it, it's like if you walked out of Estera's gates in um, Monster Hunter World and then you would, were just in the ancient forest, um, it's all connected in that sort of way. And even after you complete a hunt, you just stay in that open area. You can go back to like little camp pop-ups you've made. Or if you want to start up a new hunt, you just go find a monster and start beating it until it's like it starts going, hey, you've done a certain amount of damage to the monster. You are now locked into this is your next quest target. Yeah. Very cool game. Very excited. Oh, <laughs> someone else, so, someone I'm else excited can for you guys. Hit, me, hit me with a couple things from the list. What are, we, what are we excited for? What are we keen for? Terry Bogard in Street Fighter VI. Um, very, I was very would. interested to see how an SNK character would say, uh, uh, translate into a Capcom game and it doesn't look like they really went into doing a lot of SNK systems but they reference basically every single one of his moves he's ever had into his moveset and it's just really cool to see him in this game. Uh, they also showcased his uh, secondary costume which is based on his um, Mark of the Wolves design and a neat detail that they showed between these is that in his intro and outro animations for his classic costume he jumps up into the air and grabs his hat to put that on. But um, in his Mark of the Wolves costume, because he doesn't wear a hat, he jumps up into the air to get his coat into, like his arms into his coat and putting it on that way. So just kind of neat little details like that really helps flesh out the character a little bit more. And then following up onto even more fighting game news, My Shiro Nui was shown for um, Fatal Fury City of the Wolves. And they've completely... Uh, redesigned her by putting her into a tight leather motorcycle outfit instead of being a um a busty ninja. Which <laughs> honestly, improvement. 
And then they also showcase, hey, no, don't worry, her old busty ninja outfit is still in the game. Don't, don't leave us. Marvel Rivals showcased Captain America and um, Winter Soldier were going to be in the games, which is weird to think that it's this close to release. Uh, the game's coming out. They also announced the game's coming out in December, but also it's been, we've known about this game for so long and it's been like this entire time. Oh, uh, yeah, Captain America wasn't in the game. Really weird that that, that was the case. Yeah, well, America's a little bit problematic at the moment, so maybe they're trying to distance themselves. Could be. Also, shut the front door. Just saw the Space Marine 2 is coming out in, like, two weeks. Oh, oh shit, that's soon, man. Space that, that's what I guessed before, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah no, 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 it was. You, you, you said it's a matter of weeks, but uh, at the end of the Space Marine 2 footage, um, September 9th. I think that's the same day Astrobot comes out. <laughs> well, sucks to be Astrobot. <laughs> I made my decision already. <laughs> and it's not Space Marines. Um, and yeah, the last one that I want to touch on real quick is that um, they showed a, they showcased a new trailer for uh, the first Berserker Kazan. Um, looks really good. Big takeaway I had from the trailer though is that Ben Star from Final Fantasy 16 is going to be the main character in the game. Ah, uh, Ben Star, cool. Hey, I've heard a lot of interviews with him. He's a fucking cool dude. Yeah, no, I'm really glad that Ben Star's getting a lot of um recognition ever since Final Fantasy 16 came out. He's a, um, he, he did a phenomenal job in that game, and I'm glad he's getting more roles. Come to me, Ifrit! He says that, doesn't he? He does. He does indeed. <laughs> oh, I lied. There's one more thing I want to add in, but this is to laugh at something. They showcased a teaser trailer for an um, Amazon series called Secret Level, where every episode is going to be based oh, yeah. on... Every episode is going to be based on a different video game IP. Um, it's being made by the... Um, the people behind Love, Death, and Robots set, so that's kind of like the direction you can kind of expect it to go. Oh, um, yeah. 15 episodes, I think it is, because that's what it says in the trailer, 15 stories inspired by your favorite games. Um, they, they're like, hey, we're doing Armored Core, we're doing Mega Man, um, we're doing, I, I think Space Marines was in there, we're doing a Seafood episode. But the funniest one to me is that PlayStation got two episodes. There's one that's going to be PlayStation IPs in general, um, and the other one is a Concord episode. <laughs> for flagrant ab- advertising. Flagrant advertising for a game that's bombed immediately. And the series isn't coming out till December. Well, it might do the Cyberpunk Edge Runners thing. And really yeah, I was going to say, it might, it might drum up some support then. I well, doubt as long it. As get, look, as long as they get one more player, that's a win in their book, right? You gotta take what you can get. <laughs> Uh, I noticed that uh, Civ's in the list as well. Civ 7. I know we've briefly talked about it when they announced it and things, but uh, what, what, what are we feeling, fellas? Feeling good. I, feeling I'm good. not big into these um, games. I, I, um, I booted up the trailer and then I showed it to my laptop and my laptop um, exploded. Um, <laughs> so all the best. And I know we're skipping ahead here, but i um, not sure how Civ 7's going to run on the Nintendo Switch because it was announced on the Nintendo Switch. Um, it wasn't? Yeah. Yeah, I missed that. Oh, of, God. Well, no, it's, it's as part of like that Nintendo Direct, um, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, oh, I was I like, see. oh, yeah, Civ 7's coming to Switch, and my Switch just burst into flames thinking about that. <laughs> um, and I was watching it on the tram in the way to work, so I don't even know how it knew. Um, surely that's a fucking Switch 2 game. Surely. Yeah. No, if they said Switch, it's coming to Switch. No, no, but did, did you see the second eye in there? It's coming to Switch. Ah, that's how they got it. Um, but sure, but surely it runs at single digit frames on the Switch. But it's like, oh no, get the Switch too. But realistically, who is playing Civ on fucking Switch? I know they bought Civ Five and Civ Six to Switch, and I, for whatever reason, they I'd be very interested six, in seeing those people. Five? I thought they did. Maybe they didn't. But look, look, well, that's even worse. If if Civ Six is fucking a beast anyway. But I can imagine you're getting into like turn forty or something, and like the Switch just catches fire. <laughs> um, or you can only play with like three civs at the same time or something but, but yeah anyway I'm very excited for Civ 7 um, can't wait for them to strip it bare and then sell us the DLCs that are in Civ 6 <laughs> um, as they always fucking All, do always has just been. as bad as the fucking sims for doing that as well oh, and, and remember five days early access if you pre-order the expensive edition is it actually five days now it's getting fucking worse um, how would you like to play ugh. the game a year early for the small price of $17 billion. We call that early access. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for beta testing our game for free. Yeah, or for yeah. paying us money to beta test our game. Ugh, grim. Oh, well. 
<laughs> All right, Stephen, tell us about how you're excited for Starfield getting a car and Indiana Jones. Um, in, in, Please, in, Indiana Jones starting is growing on, soon. Have mercy. <laughs> Indiana Jones is growing on me like a fungus. Um, I think I'm only... Because it's on Game Pass, I'll be honest. Like, if this game wasn't coming to Game Pass, I would literally be like, this is the shitty cash grab, rah, rah, rah. But the more I see of it, the more it looks fun. I'm still wigging out every time it goes, it goes from first person to third person. It should have just um, been I a third person it. game. I'm still holding that uh, opinion. Oh, 100%, 100%. Like it's, but then you find that circle of it's, everyone would just call it um, Xbox's Uncharted, which and Uncharted is based off Indiana Jones. So it'd be Indiana Jones, which is copying Uncharted, which is copying Indiana Jones. So, uh, fucking whatever. Maybe the action scenes or something. And I guess maybe because... It's because it's Bethesda that's making Indiana Jones, isn't it? Maybe they just prefer... Publishing, it's Machine Games that's making it. Ah, Machine Ah, okay. Maybe fucking Bethesda's like, no, it's got to be first bit. Um, I think it's just because that's what Machine Games is used to, because they make the Wolfenstein games. Ah, maybe it is. Maybe they'll... Man, they're always making games against Nazis. Hmm. Yeah, I've made that joke multiple times. Yeah, and I'm making it again. Um, uh, and also the Starfield car thing, uh, I don't care anymore. I'm the, the big thing for Indiana Jones, real quick though, is that it's coming out December 9th on Xbox and PC. But then they're like, oh, and one more thing, it's coming to PlayStation 5 in like fall 2025, I think it was. And it, at the Gamescom audience, that was the one that got the bigger pop. Like people saw <laughs> the, December, the people saw the December 9th before Xbox and PC and were like, yeah, okay. And then the PlayStation 5 release popped up and it's like, yay, now I'll play it. <laughs> That's what it is. That's unfortunately what it is, isn't it? Anybody that thinks that this wasn't coming to PlayStation uh, is certifiably insane. Oh, no, Phil said it wouldn't. If, uh, oh, the, cope of, the of, cope of the interviews Phil had afterwards was insane. And, if you, and I'm not sure whether, it was, it's, whether he's had a, a very big talking to from his overlords at Microsoft or shareholders or something. But he's like, he's no longer like, yeah, gaming's for everyone. It's more of a, yeah, we've got a business to run. Buy our stuff or we're going to go out of business. Um, he seems a lot more serious now, which it, it, it would not surprise me if this is this last year. Like, they've got to start getting hit. They've got to start putting numbers on the board. And I've, unfortunately, as a big Xbox fanboy, and I've said this numerous times, they've got to start doing something. They've got to start making if you want to help them stop, game. If you want to help them, start buying the games instead of playing them on Game Pass. But well, they offer it on Game Pass. What am I supposed to? I'm not going to have Game Pass and buy the games. I'd rather kill myself. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> if that's the choice You're I right make, to do I'm, it. <laughs> I'm having a bath of the Xbox. Mor- <laughs> right morally correct choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, that um, is but, that is the hole they put themselves into. Yeah, and and because they're trying to pivot, and then I think we talked about it last episode with that the app on Samsung TVs, like they are pivoting to a, and I. This thought just, just came into my head, but remember how we spoke about well, how in the tech industry it's software as a service? Xbox is going to get down the games as a service um, with Game Pass. Uh, not, not necessarily like live service games, but with offering games like through Game Pass. And I'm a big fan of Game Pass, but th- they just need to make good games. And because they lost so much momentum in the PS4 era with that whole, your Xbox is a media device and always needs to be connected to the internet. And they lost the first two or three years and they never picked up the momentum again. And they just lost their footing. And I honestly think the more I think about it, it's, it's too late. The trains left the station. They're competing against like PlayStation and PlayStation is so far ahead. They're competing against the switch. The switch is so far ahead. The wow. switch is almost about to become the, the best selling console in history, actually. Which is fucking insane when you think about that. Jim Ryan but, is going to come out of retirement just to update the PS2 numbers again. Oh, actually, we just we found this warehouse and it's actually two million more sold. Um, um, but yeah, like, um, yeah, good luck to Xbox. Oh, yeah, no, on the Starfield thing, I don't care for the cars. That DLC looks like it should have been in the base game. Um, House of Rune was talked about constantly within that game. Um, so it's been nothing but set up. Dog shit. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, Seth, on the wilds thing for a sec, you know the big uh, electri- uh, ele- ele- electric-y boy, the big sparky boy in the trailer? Yeah, Ray Dow, I think was the name. Oh, was it? I uh, See, I, I will no longer be able to know what its proper name is because I've seen the community call it Thor Megala, and yeah, now that's yeah. its name. 
<laughs> the developers acknowledge that during one of the live streams as well. They're like, yeah, we've seen the community call it for Megala, and we love that name, but um, the official <laughs> name is Radial. I don't give a shit what you think the official name is. It's Thor Megala. <laughs> uh, very cool. Uh, right, does that take us through the Gamescom list? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Alrighty then. Overall, uh, it wasn't a really great show. I shouldn't have woken up at four o'clock in the morning to watch it. No, you, sh you should never do that. It's, it's, it's literally recorded. It's what we're, what we're doing now. Um, anyway. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo Direct. Uh, I love that they now have to just disclaimer every official media thing that they ever do with, this is not discussing the Switch successor, please stop asking. Yep. Yeah, I know. How funny is that? Uh, Patrick, do you want to do this in order of the article or in order of what it, uh, what it was announced in during the Nintendo Direct? Because you've got to scroll through halfway of the article to get down to the indie world, which is what started the stream. And the indie world was a lot of um, smaller stuff that... Honestly, there's only, like, one thing here I want to talk about. Uh... Bellatra coming to Switch? I missed this. Oh, yeah, not, not even just that. Um, Bellatra getting crossover with um, The Witcher, Dave the Diver, Among Us, and Vampire Survivors. Yeah. I'll take that. I, this Among is one of those us. games that I, I've, I've been shocked was not on Switch. <laughs> uh, no, it's been on the Switch for a while. My friend has been playing it. Um, it I actually? think it was more of an... Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, this yeah, was just an announcement for the crossovers. Ah, yeah. okay. Uh, there, yeah. There's something else I'm thinking of that I went, oh, that'd be really good on the Switch then, but it wasn't Bellatro. Can't remember what it was. Anyway, glad that it's on the Switch. Highly recommend anyone go and play it. And very cool that it's getting crossovers. Yeah, I lied. There's two things I want to talk about uh, real quick. Uh, Pizza Tower came out on the Switch today. Very good game. If you have a Switch and haven't played Pizza Tower, you should absolutely play it. Um, and the second one, which is the one I was more interested in, was... um. They announced this game called Peglin. It's a game where uh, it's a Peggle style game where as you're breaking the bricks, the better you do every turn of breaking the bricks. Um, the goblin at the top of the screen it, that's doing a turn based uh, RPG combat system does more damage. It, it looks really, it, really interesting and really fun. Unfortunately, cool. it's thirty dollars on Steam, and I Ooh. think thirty dollars is a little too steep for my liking for this game. I would agree. I, I I think that my upper limit would have been like twenty five. But yeah, no, that's everything from the indie world I I was interested in. Cool. Sorry, no, I got distracted watching the the the, the Peglin trailer. Uh, anything from the indie world for you, Steve? Um, yeah, just the the Peglin. Um, I don't know why it's called that. Pretty funny though. Um, but that that indie because trailer because Peglin and Goblin can uh, uh, mixed together. I I I don't remember asking. Um. <laughs> Uh, oh, the Steve, I think you talked about how you're going to wishlist uh, date everything. It's fucking cringe as shit. I, oh. Whew. But I didn't care for any of this. Jeez, this is an unhinged trailer. Okay, cool. Well, was there anything in the direct that you did like, Steve? Um, not really, to be no. honest. I've heard good I'll things about that. that as a no. <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> yeah, no, the... Maybe like the My Sims remake, but like that's only because I really wanted that as a kid and I didn't get it. So maybe it's just kind of cope. I will admit that it's pretty cool that the Yakuza series is coming to Switch. Um, no clue how that's going Not to run. Not the series, or just the, Kiwami is 1. It's just Yakuza Kiwami. And I'm very, very, very rogue move from Ryugu Gata Studio to be like, you know what, let's just release one game on the Switch, see how that sells, and then we'll see if everything else comes. <laughs> Very I'm surprised it's Kiwami and not Zero. Uh, Kiwami, Zero feels like it's a prequel. Kiwami's just like very good. Um, like it's a full game. But yeah, right on. That's pretty cool. Don't know how that will run on the fucking Switch either. Don't know how any of these games run on the Switch these days. Kiwami was a PS3 game. I think they can get away with it. Ooh, fact check you on that big fella. That's a PS4 game. No, Kiwami came out on PS3. Did it really? Yeah. Oh shit, maybe because I played it on the um, PS4, I assume. Are you sure about that? Oh, it did too. Man. Seth Summer, I kneel. Don't question me about my Yakuza knowledge. It's a, a franchise I love and haven't You've played You've only played like two of the games. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that was the point I was getting to. It's like, I love this franchise. I've only played two games. But I've kept up with the news of uh, the games every time a new one comes out. I'm playing the um, Yakuza Like a Dragon at the moment. Holy shit. Holy shit. That's a fucking video game. Ooh. That's for another Well, time. I'll take that as a bouncing board because um, uh, Ichiban 
main character of Yakuza uh, Like a Dragon, he loves Dragon yep. Quest, and they just showcased more Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake um, at this Nintendo Direct. And they're going out of the way going, oh, hey, we added new jobs into the game. Uh, we have added a Beastmaster class that was in here. Also, we've, um, we're just saying you adjust the characters you want to play as on the fly, like change between their genders and skills, uh, like job classes, which is really interesting to see. Um, very excited for this game. I'm not going to pick it up right away, though, because they announced one and two was uh, being remade as well. And I want to play those in number order. <laughs> Do you reckon those? Hey, look, it doesn't matter what we think of those be released in time. Patrick, is there anything you want to touch on before I go through my list of things here? Uh, the Patrick Star game, which uh, this might shock oh, you, yeah. is actually based on my life. Mm, I thought you sounded a, a bit star. like you. Yeah, I was a star. Yeah, get, get, get that along. I'm, I'm very surprised to hear that your life is a uh, physics-based puzzle game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you if you so if, if you were around what I had to do at uni, you would 100 percent agree. My life is a physics-based puzzle game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that actually describes it too fucking well. God damn, I. I, I kind of have to look at it just because it's interesting, but I, the, okay. It feels like, and this is a little off base, but the Patrick Star game feels like what someone would try to do with something like Simpsons Hit and Run if they made it like current year. I was going to you say reckon? it's like a licensed goat simulator. That's probably a better description actually, but it was it was just something about the like, uh, maybe it was like either the camera or the it was either the camera the kind of obvious this is the the thing that you love from the game type thing but it just i don't know i just i got uh before we started messing with everything i got when he's just running around i got very much uh simpson sit and runny type vibes yeah no i get that uh but no that's that's basically me yeah i now see that uh civ is available uh civ 7 coming to switch uh we'll we'll see <laughs> laughs and frame rate um, I think that's basically <laughs> it in terms of the stuff uh, of interest to me uh, for me the Castlevania DS collection looks really cool um, those are games I've been wanting to try for a long time but never got around to actually doing the big E word on them but yeah what's no, the big E word? XC? emulation ah thanks for demonetizing now I mean you asked um, but yeah, no, those, those games that I've heard really good things about, so I'm excited to give that a try. Italia Yumiya looks really good. Uh, the Italia games are, well, they're, they're more as something that Trin plays a lot, but they, every time I see them, they do look interesting. It's just I never really get around to trying them. But Yumiya being a fresh start might be something that interests me to get into, uh, into it finally. And then um, Capcom Fighting Collection 2. This is an insane collection of fighting games because it's mixing 2D games and 3D games into the collection. Um, we get uh, Capcom vs. SNK, Capcom vs. SNK 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, and then also for some reason Capcom Fighting Evolution, which was the last uh, fighting game Capcom made before Street Fighter 4 and was, is like heralded as the game that killed their fighting game output for like years. It, it was that awful and that undercooked. And then they got some 3D games like Project Justice, which is the second Rival Circles game, Plasma Swords, and Power Stone 1 and Power Stone 2. Uh, the, thing that's, the things that are weird to me is that I would have taken, like, I, I would have taken out Capcom Fighting Evolution and put it in, like, Rival Schools 1 in there instead. But I kind of see why they did that because. Uh, um, Project Justice is just kind of a better rival schools than the first one was. It's just I have more more nostalgia for the first one, and no one would buy a Capcom Fighting Evolution in any other way than being uh, bundled with this absolute all star cast list of fighting games. Mm. So I'm very excited to see for that announcement. Uh, that collection is coming out next year, and they also said the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection is coming out set, uh, September 12. It's very weird that all of these Capcom fighting collections are being announced at Nintendo Directs. They just, like, got a stranglehold on that. Yeah. But yeah, that, I, I think that's about it for the Nintendo Directs for me as well. Rune, Sweet, Rune well, Factory, Rune Factory, Factory is a big announcement, but I'm not too big on Rune Factory. Steve, any other things from Nintendo Direct that you want to hit? 
nah, it's having a geese at it now. Nah, I, I was so fucking bored in that. I expected something and I was fucking disappointed. It was a good Nintendo Direct if you like fighting games and RPGs. And Patrick. And Patrick. I do like Patrick and Patrick adjacent <laughs> people. <laughs> How many people are currently playing Patrick? <laughs> don't, uh... don't, 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 don't. Put it down. Put it down. Drop it. <laughs> Google tab is closed. We can move on. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, uh, we managed to survive another list episode. We did it. Uh, we only lost uh, a few brain cells to that, but that might have also been the petrol I was huffing uh, off to the side of the microphone. Um, what a funny thing to say, Pat. What a funny <laughs> thing to say. What are you just a funny guy? What can I say? If you wrap Seriously, it up quickly, this will be one of our shorter episodes. Yeah, I know. And I, I don't know, like, I mean, I'd love to set that as the precedent, but I don't want to just whiplash the audience from one of our shortest to white, what could be one of our longest. Who knows? I mean, just imagine having a list episode and it being less than three hours long. <laughs> Absolutely unheard of. You know what changed? I didn't talk about Monster Hunter in terms of what I'd been up to in Monster Hunter this, uh, on, on this one. I got- You said something uh, about a, a Gordon Magala armor or something. Yeah, exactly. I got- well, th Thank you for listening, Steve. That, that means a lot. Anything's for um, you, big dog. <laughs> you know what? You're right, Steve. I will gift you a gift copy of the season pass from Borderlands 4. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, best friend. <laughs> Are you looking forward to all 30 minutes of content? <laughs> <laughs> no. God, I hope they do better than Tiny Tears. Anyway, uh, we made it to the end of the news section. So uh, that brings us to the end of episode 118. Uh, if you like what you list, uh, what you've been listening to, please give us some kind of feedback, be that a comment, be that a review, be that some kind of subscription on whatever platform you're listening to this on helps us spread the degeneracy and uh, help helps uh, promote the, the the worst voices in, in gaming and journalism uh, to the algorithm. Uh, we are on all socials, uh, all the, the good ones, at least truth social, of course, uh, got to be on that. No, I'm kidding. Um, we're on X Fast Travel Lounge minus the L that Elon continues to take. We're on uh, mailbag Fast Travel Lounge at gmail.com, Fast Travel Lounge dot Blue Sky dot uh, whatever. Uh, I always strip it up. The Blue Sky dot social. Nailed it. Uh, and uh, Facebook at Fast Travel Lounge. Uh, I think that is the obligatory uh, plugging done. Anyone want to hint at stuff for next week? Or next episode, rather. Oh yeah, I do. Um, I, well, no, this is just a, a general call out to the the lovely fans we've got. Um, I'm planning a trip to Japan uh, in the new year, so please send me through all your um your recommendations for Japan. Uh, would you and also like them to send your to send you their credit card numbers so you can act on those recommendations? No, no, no. We want to keep the itinerary and the credit card separate. Uh, it's like uh, it's a tax yeah, thing. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I, depending on when we do the next recording, probably too early for Space Marine 2. Maybe. Uh, no, it's almost certainly too early for Space Marine 2, actually. What about Earth Marine? Um, ah, you know what? True. What about, what about Earth? What about Earth Land? You know? Screw, screw Marine. No, I will probably be starting on Monster Hunter Now Season 3. I think that will probably be out before we, we, we next have a chat. And maybe, I'm not holding myself to this, but just maybe... I will go and watch the Borderlands movie while it's still available in cinemas. I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, that, and that would be why I, uh, some would say, uh, am, am constructed uh, in, in, a different, in a different way, if you will. Uh, anything from you, Seth? I'm going to finish Kunitsugami and probably do a check-in on uh, how that is after finishing the game. Uh, outside of that, I really want to play Neo The World Ends With You before Renatus comes out this month. So, yeah, those, those are the ones that are coming to the top of my mind. Well, that's what you have to look forward to on episode 119, because this is the episode of 118. Thank you so much for listening. I've been Pat. I've been joined by Seth and Steve. And we'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Happy birthday, Borderlands movie releasing on digital. Happy birthday being interrupted. 